Good morning, everyone. It's a new thing I'm trying out here. I got a cup of coffee in one hand, camera in the other. I wanted to show you something that we're gonna focus on this morning. Have you ever thought about haying your yard? For us here on our homestead, hay is one of our, our major expenses. We have goats and pigs and chickens and ducks, and everybody uses hay in some regard, whether it's for bedding or for eating. And around here in Northeast Pennsylvania, hay costs somewhere between four and seven dollars a bale right now. And what I've learned to do is to use all of the uh, assets that are given to us on our seven acres. And here's, here's what I want to show you. Hopefully you can see it. Unfortunately, I've let some of this go a little longer than I normally would. As you can see on the ground, what I've done is I let the grass grow a little higher than normal. It's probably something you can't necessarily do in the suburbs. But I let the grass grow a little higher than normal and then I cut it with the mower and then I go back and forth through the yard and I blow it into piles. Very similar to what a farmer does when he hays his field. And then I let it dry for a couple of days. Now unfortunately here we had a, a couple of days of of storms and it's gotten a little bit matted down but it's still going to be easy to pick up. What I found is that on the just in the front of our of our acreage that I can get around about seven to ten bales of hay every time I mow. And so this dries up just as hay dries up on a field a little bit and then I feed it directly to the animals or we use it for bedding and then we reduce our cost which is essential for us. You know, a lot of people ask me when I say that we have a homestead, you know, the, the, the typical question is, well, what's a homestead? <laughs> and a homestead for us, is, at least the way we like to think about it, is that it's a farm in miniature. So everything that you see and expect on, you know, a traditional farm, we're doing it here, but we're doing it on a miniature scale. So our haying the yard is very similar to a farmer haying his fields, although our hay is much shorter and its use is maybe a little bit different. We're not putting it up uh, for the winter or anything. We're literally just immediately using it in our garden beds for mulch. We are putting it in bedding for nest boxes for our ducks and chickens. We're feeding it to our goats. We're feeding it to our pastured pigs, which eat a lot of their diet on grass. And what I'm gonna do this morning is show you how we do this project. Coffee, the essential lifeblood of the father of five who has a farm. <laughs> All right, so here behind me is one of the most important tools on the homestead. This is our lawn sweeper. I bought the biggest one I could find because we have uh, about, about five acres of open land, so that's quite a bit of mowing. This lawn sweeper just goes right behind my, my regular uh, riding mower and it goes uh, along the grass and literally does what it says. It sweeps up all the grass into this uh, mesh basket in the back and then I just take it anywhere I like and dump. So typically I'll bring many loads up to the garden where we're using it for mulch. Um, I'll bring uh, loads of it around in our orchard to mulch trees. Um, we are also using it for bedding for our animals. I also bring plenty of it down to the pigs because the pigs can eat tons of grass a day. So again, this really does help us in keeping our expenses low. Keeps us from buying loads of bales of hay. Man, it is already really hot this morning. Well, we're going to get this done anyway. It must be done today. It's one of the things about being a farmer that's hard is, you know, some days you you get out of bed in the morning, it's hot like this, and you're like, wow, do I really, <laughs> do I really want to be doing this? And it's got to be done, so it kicks you in the butt, but it also gives you uh, discipline, which I think is one of the most beautiful and important parts of homesteading. <laughs>
that process took about 10 minutes and it looks to me hopefully you can see this all together here if it was compressed like you know a typical bale of hay would be it looks to me like we probably got about uh, three three to four bales of hay just off of about a quarter acre um, took about 10 minutes like I said and what we're gonna do is well I'll show you what we're gonna do this is one of those embarrassing farm fails Did you ever have a garden <laughs> that just completely got away from you we we got we overran our headlights with this one this year and we just ran out of time and energy to get to this garden there's actually corn growing up in here trying to grow there's squash in there somewhere but what we're gonna do this week is we're actually going to do the hard work of just getting in here and pulling out all these weeds and then using our new mulch that I'm getting off of our yard um, to get in here and just clean this up. You know, this time of year, it's really easy to get... Wow, there's even some tomatoes growing in there. <laughs> this time of year, it's, it's easy to get discouraged with the gardens because, you know, it's hot. Man, it's hot today. And... Also, the bugs are starting to get to things, you know, so it starts to feel like not as much fun anymore. But this is the time of year when you can really get great yields if you stay on top of it. And um, there's a beautiful uh, vlog that our family likes to follow called Roots and Refuge. And Jesse, who is one of the main folks on Roots and Refuge, said that that we're meant to be in the garden. And she comes from a Christian perspective, which we really love and she says that we were meant to be in the garden so don't give up on the garden you know when if when it feels really hard uh, especially in the summer months this is the time to get ready for fall I know it sounds crazy and you might be tired but there's gonna be such benefit and yield you know and so uh, even though it seems like maybe we should we're not gonna give up on that even though right now it looks like a big uh, uh, big giant homestead fail uh, we're going to make it look beautiful this week, and we'll show you the results of that. But i got to get back to doing this hay. I was thinking while I was mowing that maybe our big homestead fail, at least for now, there is corn growing, and I know there's squash in there. Um, maybe our big homestead fail, or what we think is a fail, is actually a blessing in disguise. The uh, We've been having a pretty s serious drought here in northeast Pennsylvania and it seems to me that there's quite a bit of moisture allowed in there because of all the shade with all the other weeds and things so it could be that uh, this is saving our corn. Who knows? Anyway, the other thought I was having as I was sweeping up the rest of our yard is that we have to look at nature as having a, a pattern of abundance. And what I mean by that is that if we operate in the way that we respond to nature, as if nature is always in deficit, that we need to continually add things, um, we're missing, we're going to miss out on what nature is wanting to give us. And I'm talking about specifically this morning as I'm, as I'm reaping this benefit of free mulch and hay for our animals, uh, it's growing everywhere. It's, and it never stops growing this time of year. It just keeps coming and it comes faster than I can sometimes get to it, obviously. But the point is, is that when we see the way a seed creates a fruit and a fruit creates however many other seeds in it, depending on the fruit, usually it's in the, in, you know, in the neighborhood of a hundred those individual seeds then go forth and bear, and bear new plants, which bear more fruit, which bear more seeds. See, this is the pattern of nature all around us, that it is a pattern of abundance, not of deficit. And I think we really need to begin to see that, especially as homesteaders, farmers, gardeners. I think that maybe comes more apparent. But uh, for those of you maybe watching who, who aren't, or maybe just getting into gardening and homesteading, Keep your eyes open. Keep your heart open. There is abundance all around us, and all we got to do is step into it. That's it. Isn't that awesome? 
So that took about 25 minutes to do about an acre of our land and we've got right there about the equivalent of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I'm just going to say if it was compressed, maybe eight bales of hay. That's amazing. So that's for us a savings of about, let's say, $40. Um, it doesn't sound like much, but uh, you do that on our entire property uh, once a week, which is what I end up doing. It is, uh, you know, we're talking about saving you know, up over $100 a week in hay and mulch and animal feed, and it all adds up. So you're talking $400 a month, right? So that is pretty awesome. And this lawn sweeper cost me about uh, $250, I think. So, and I bought it two years ago so baby that thing's paid for itself many times over so that is awesome so that's it I'm gonna take a break because it is blazing hot out here as you can see I'm sitting under our maple tree um, which will soon have a pond built under it very excited about that for our ducks and I'm gonna take a break and we will catch you later <laughs> Subscribe. <laughs> like and subscribe. Like and subscribe.